in today's show. That's a really important distinction about passion. There's two viewpoints on it that I think people kind of get messed up on. There's the viewpoint that says, follow your passion. And there's a viewpoint that says, find your passion. And the word before passion is really important because follow your passion means you're going to keep doing things until eventually hope it, you hope it works out. Finding your passion is an active process and requires a lot of damn work. You know, you got to do some things you like, you got to do some things you don't like, and you find passion. But to just follow your passion, I think is a really poor idea. Agreed a hundred percent. And see, that's, and I'm glad we're talking, man. I'm glad to know you because <laughs> all these folks that talk about just, just well, how do I, how can I be successful? Mr. Guru, just follow your passion, man. Just what are your passion about? Go do that. You're going to be, you're going to be following it for a long no, time, man. Oh, no, no. Listen, you, you, lots of people are passionate about lots of things. people are passionate about sleep. You're not going to make any money on that. They're just passionate about playing video games. And while I, I understand that there are some few, very few people that do make money, doing that, you're not going to make money doing that. You find your passion. In today's ultra-competitive business world, being a successful entrepreneur or business owner can be very challenging. Fortunately, contemporary times have blessed us with resources for tackling those challenges and getting us to success more quickly than we could have imagined. Welcome to The Root of All Success with The Real Jason Duncan, a podcast that explores how the world's most powerful entrepreneurs grow incredible companies. This podcast looks at the five keys to unlocking success as an entrepreneur. A successful educator turned entrepreneur, Jason's mission is to use his gifts of teaching and leadership to help others get the results they want out of life. Join Jason every week and learn the keys to grow a truly successful business. Well, welcome back to the show. This is The Real Jason Duncan. Thank you for tuning in again for another episode of The Root of All Success. Man, I've got a really cool guest today. I, I, and, and what's funny about uh, Jeremy Slate, who's my guest today, is that I was just on his show a couple of days ago, or the recording of the show. I don't know when he's going to release it. My, they always release a little bit later than the recording. And uh, I get re, I get requests to be on shows, um, you know, pretty frequently. And I get requests for people to be on the shows pretty frequently. And I, I honestly, I, I will take just about any show that somebody wants me to be on because I want to expand my brand. That's the whole point of podcasting. And so Jeremy did a fantastic job with his show, hosting the show the other day, and I had a fantastic time talking to him. And uh, it was a great show. Well, today, in my preparation, getting ready for my guests on my show today, I pulled Jeremy's bio for the first time, and I'm reading his bio ready for the show. I'm like, holy crap. Like I should have, <laughs> I should have read that before I went on the show. So, so Jeremy Slate's the founder of Create Your Own Life podcast, which studies high performers, and uh, he studied literature at Oxford University. He was a power lifter, and uh, which we'll talk about a little bit on the show about how, how big his muscles are. <laughs> You'll hear him as a five seven dude how much he can bench press and deadlift. It's 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 uh, it's kind of scary, but he's turned into a media entrepreneur, and uh, with his podcast, which I was a guest on the other day. Uh, it was ranked number one in the business category in iTunes, number 78 in the top 100 of all podcasts. And he's ranked one of the top 26 podcasts for entrepreneurs to listen to both in, uh, I guess it was 2017 and 2018 by CIO Magazine. It was a top podcast to listen to by Inc. Magazine in 2019. And he was named the millennial influencer to follow by BuzzFeed in 2019. So, so like I said, you know, I went into that show and recorded that show with him the other day and we had a fantastic time and he did a great job as he should because he's an amazing podcaster. But I didn't realize how amazing it was and how successful he was until I was preparing for him to be on my show. So uh, his Create Your Own Life podcast has been downloaded over two and a half million times. He has over a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, hundred thousand downloads uh, per month. He's also a contributing editor to New Theory Magazine and Grit Daily and uh, he and his wife, Brielle, started a, an agency called Command Your Brand, which we'll talk a little bit about why they started that. And that's to really leverage the power of podcasting for his clients. So I don't have very many people on the show who are just podcasters, like this is what they do, but this is one of them. So please help me welcome the amazing, the amazing, the one and only Jeremy Ryan Slate to the show. Hey, man, I'm, I'm stoked to be here. I know we just got a chance to, to do recording for my show uh couple of days ago, man. So it's, it's nice to, to be here and hang out. Yeah. So we'll have to, uh, in, in when you release the episode that I'm on with you, and then when I release this one with, 
you on my show, we need to make sure that our editors uh, both put the links to the the reciprocal show. So because because you've got a killer podcast, very highly ranked podcast. And, and I was telling you pre-show, I probably should have read your bio before I went on your show because I didn't realize how big of a deal it was. I'm, I'm now I'm even more honored that I was a guest on your show. But you've got this the show called uh, Create Your Own Life Podcast, where you uh, study high performers. And and um, I don't know how I ended up on the show, but I'm very grateful that I was there. People need to go look that up. Create Your Own Life Podcast with Jeremy Slate. So, Jeremy, let's talk, man. So, uh, this show that I do is all about entrepreneurs, man. It's a, how, how they became successful. Now, I also interview non-entrepreneurs from time to time, um, but it's really about success. So, mm-hmm. but for you, like, do you consider yourself an entrepreneur? Like, tell 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 me a little bit about what you think you are. But you're, you're going to laugh at this, by the way. So as I mentioned, like, I'm <clears throat> too highly educated for my own good. And uh, like growing up, I thought like I had this friend, uh, my friend Juan, and he always wanted to be an entrepreneur. And I'm like, oh, it means the dude just wants to be lazy and do nothing. Um, because I had this idea that like you got to like just kind of work your butt off like to, to do anything. And then once I kind of realized as I as I got older, like what entrepreneurship really is like, yeah, now I would consider myself an entrepreneur. But I think growing up in a super, super blue collar family, I had these ideas of like, you know, business and entrepreneurship like wasn't really like a road for me, right? My, my dad is, he's worked at two companies in his life. Um, he just retired. He's, he's uh, 68 now. And, you know, he worked at those companies forever. So for me, you know, I consider myself an entrepreneur now, but I didn't think that door was ever open to me. And then, frankly, I didn't know what the door was early in life. What is it? Uh, what is it about? Not every, but what is it about employees who sometimes look with suspicion and almost contempt at the entrepreneur they work for? saying, well, he's lazy or she's lazy or all they do sit around and collect the money that I work for. What, what, where does that come from? You know, that's really interesting. And I think it comes from the perspective of <clears throat> somebody not really able to create for themselves. Do you know what I mean? Like they, they, they know that kind of the only ability they have, um, you know, if they're a hard worker, like they can, they can get paid in what they're doing, but they have this inability to create for themselves and take those risks. So they want to t- they want to take the idea of risk taking and make it a bad thing, because when you look at it, right, like an entrepreneur, maybe they put their house in the line, maybe they put their pay on the line, maybe they put their family on the line, whatever it is they put on the line to create that business. They took a huge risk. And for most people, they're risk averse, man. They're not willing to do that. And I think it comes more from a place of fear and a little bit of jealousy than anything else. I would agree. I would agree. And it's really this. um it's uh, disappointing, especially if it happens, at, if, if you see it in, and sense it in your own employees, mm-hmm. which um, I, I'm, I'm glad to say it's happened very, very few times in my life as an entrepreneur, as a founder of a company. But when it happens, it's so disappointing. It's like, man, yeah. like, dude, uh, or dudette, whatever, you know, whatever <laughs> it is, like, I hired you, I gave you, you pay your mortgage with like the risk that I took in the, in the days yeah. when payroll is tight, guess who's not getting paid? It's this guy, me, I'm the one. So I don't understand that. And, and, and so this all goes back to, the, to the, the reason I'm going down this little rabbit trail for a minute is this gets back to the entrepreneur because the entrepreneur is someone who takes risks and innovates. That's my opinion of an entrepreneur. And so you have done that. You and your wife, Brielle, have done a great job of doing that with, uh, with Command Your Brand Media and with, uh, with what you're doing with the podcast. I mean, to, to reach number one in the business category is a, is it a significant feat that you've been able to do? And, and it took risk to do it. You don't just set up a mic and a camera and make number one, like there are things you had to do. So tell me about how and why you got started in podcasting to begin with. Frankly, because I failed at so many things, man. Um, you know, as I, as I mentioned, like, you know, I have my master's in in ancient history. I, I taught high school for a couple of years, um, you know, right out of college, right out of grad oh, school. That's right. We talked about that. Oh, dude, they had me for freaking lunch. <laughs> and I, I taught sophomores and sophomores, like for anybody that's never taught before, like that's being thrown into like the fire, man. And like when I was in school, I'm in, I'm in my mid thirties now. When I was in school, like if you had a flip phone, it was a big deal. So like kids having smartphones were like not even something I considered. So like every single day of my life, they're like, how much can we push this guy and get him mad? And I'll be honest, you, man, I got a little bit of a temper. So, um, you know, every day it was it was very, very close to me, uh, you know, not really having a great day. So I was just miserable every day of my life, man. Um, and, and frankly, if I, I don't know what I would have done had I not had a drastic life change. So like my, my mom had a stroke in, in 2012 
And it made me look at, at every single thing I was doing. And I'm like, well, well, shoot, man, like, do I want to do this the rest of my life? Um, I sold life insurance, which I was great at. But those conversations, man, about like death and, and everything else, like, I don't know. I struggled with those, though. I made good money doing it. I couldn't do it for a long time. Network marketing. I tried. I went to China, bought products, private labeled them and sold them on the Internet. Um, you know, didn't do that very long because I ended up getting myself out of products very quickly because of a very stupid inventory move. So I had tried all these different things that didn't really fail. I was even in home personal training in people's houses. So like I had tried different things and nothing really worked for me. And I've been a podcast fan since like 2009. And frankly, I started my own show in 2014. It was terrible. It was called Rock Your Life. Um, I ended up quitting that in about two months and started my current show in November of uh, 2015. And it, it took off, man. So podcasting just kind of became this thing's like, hey, I like listening. So let me let me try to do it. So you started in 2015. Is that what you said? Well, 2014 for the first show, which was terrible. Like it was just really bad. And uh, it, it, it was me with talking to my iBook G4, man. It's before MacBook Pros were even a thing. And uh, I didn't even have a microphone or anything. So it sounded like the teacher on Charlie Brown. Wah, 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 wah. So it just it wasn't very good. Um, and then I started the current show in 2015. I, I've been a huge podcast fan for like a long time. I was actually introduced by one of my college professors to this podcast called The No Agenda Show uh, with uh, Adam Curry and, and John Dvorak. And I actually got the interview, Adam, about a month ago, which is kind of cool because he's been like my, my podcasting idol. So you started you started podcasting in 2014 after failed attempts at teaching and other, <laughs> and other things. Uh, we share that we share the teaching background, although. I didn't it sounds it. like was, you were a much was, better teacher. I was than I really was, good at it. I love. <laughs> yeah, I was I not. I, I would have. I'd still be teaching, but you know, that's that, that's a your show. I talk about that. So if you want to hear my story about teaching, go listen to Create Your Own Life podcast with Jeremy Slate and um, the episode where the real Jason Duncan's on there. But so you started the first podcast in 2014. It was it was a Charlie Brown teacher moment. Um, but but through the process of doing it poorly. And did you recognize that it was it was poor at the time or or what happened? That's the sad part. I didn't. And, um, you know, I was I was engaged at the time. And I remember my my fiance, who's, who's now my wife, was like trying to get me to go to bed. And I'm like, no, but I got to finish this episode. My fans. She's like, I don't want to be mean, but you don't really have any fans. I, it may exactly be your mom <laughs> listening to all these episodes. My so like, fan, my fan. I, <laughs> I, I had like this, I had I nobody listening and I had this weird ego about it and I just don't know how to explain it. So I, I frankly, I had to fail in order to do it well because then I could actually look at it in post game and say like, okay, the audio wasn't good. The content wasn't good. We didn't really reach in terms of people we wanted to interview. Um, so it taught me a lot about like what not to do. And I think that's actually why I was successful the second time. So you, so in 15, you start create your own life podcast. Is that right? So yeah, been November. Doing, yeah. So you've been doing that for seven, almost seven years, yeah. seven years this year. Um, so two years in you, you, you go, you're number one on, in the business category. How the hell did that happen? Like, Dude, that's 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 pretty amazing. And again, that's certainly not an insinuation that your podcast sucks. That's obviously not. But like to do to go from just starting to number one in two years, what happened? How did you do that? Well, a lot of it was the upfront work, right? Because I didn't have a following. Um, I think I had like 200 followers on Twitter when I started. So like I had I didn't really have much. Um it came down to the, the, the willingness that I had to be able to work. So I had a small email list I'd built with all these different things that, that failed. So I had like 700 people on that. And I knew the key stat was subscribes. The number of subscribers you can get is going to be the thing that ranks your show. Like reviews are nice and they, they look good, but they don't actually help to rank your podcast. So I knew if I could get people to uh, subscribe to my show, it was going to be a big deal. So I had reached out to all those people on those email lists, every person in my phone, I was messaging people on Facebook and I found the number where they let, won't let you send the same link anymore is 500. That's where they <laughs> stop you. Um, I did the same thing on, on LinkedIn as well. I sent hundreds of messages over there and it got to the point where like I'd be in public with my friends and be like, you have an iPhone. Let me show you how to subscribe to my podcast. But I had finally gotten like enough traction early on to hit iTunes new and noteworthy with it, which at that point in time was kind of still a big deal. It isn't really as big a deal now but because there were 240,000 shows out there at that point in time. So getting an iTunes new noteworthy, you got eight weeks of free promotion 
And that helped me to really get traction early on. I had grabbed some good guests in the beginning, which helped too. So the kind of the traction with consistent good guests is something that really helped us to do that. Man. So, so as a, as a podcaster, you know, a fellow podcaster. So I've been doing this. I start my first recording was December, the Christmas, Christmas week of 2020. That's when mm-hmm. I, first, I recorded my first episode of this show. Um, and, and I actually had pretty good audio and video quality because I had a good consultant to help me figure that out to begin with. Sure. But, um, you know, and my show is pretty, doing pretty well, but it's certainly not, that's not ranked. And so when I hear you say that, it doesn't surprise me on one hand, and but on the other, it does like, okay, so if you just pay attention to it and hustle and get out there and, and do the things that you're supposed to do to beat the algorithm, so to speak, your, your people are going to hear you. People are going to listen. And it's not just about being ranked. Well, consistency. You do it. Well, and, and, you know, and, and frankly, I think you would probably tell people you didn't do it just to get ranked, although that makes you mm-hmm. feel fantastic. You do it because you want to deliver great value to yep. your audience. So, um, What's been, uh, who's been, and, and I'll give you a pass on me, but who's been the best guest <laughs> you've ever had uh, on your show? Uh, I've been pretty lucky, man. I've had a lot of really, really cool ones. Uh, um, I've had uh, David Petraeus, the former CIA director and four-star general. Um, Elio Castroneves, I'm a huge racing fan. So he got close to becoming a five-time Indy 500 champion this, this past May, man, but he's a four-time Indy 500 champion. Um, I'm a big Yankees fan. So I got to interview uh, Nick Swisher, Johnny Damon, um, I don't know where you where you sit on this one, but I had the my pillow guy on Mike Lindell, so I've been I've been pretty cool, uh, you know, with the with the guests I've had on. So how did you? So Mike Lindell, I know who he is. Some of the other yeah. people, I know who they are, but like I know I know who that guy is, and he's an entrepreneur. So that, that so let me ask about that. So as a podcaster who would love to have that guy on the show because of his what he's accomplished as an entrepreneur, how did you do that? Like, do you, do you what's your secret to get these great people? Well, part of it is is action. The other part is relevancy, um, because you, the thing you have to think about is somebody may love to be on your show, but if it's not relevant for them at the time, like they're not doing something, it doesn't really matter as much. So I had actually connected with Mike when he had his book coming out. So then it mattered, right? He has something to talk about, he has something to promote, something to do. Like, right? He's always promoting my pillow, but there's a there's a point of having a media push. And when you look at a lot of the people I've had on the show, it's because they're doing a media push at the time. So it's taking the right action, get in touch with the right people, which if you want to go that, down that road, I'm, I'm more than happy to kind of dive into that. Um, but it's also relevancy, knowing why and when somebody would do media. You know, do they have a new book launching? Do they have a new product launching? Um, is there something in the news they want to talk about? Is there something in media they want to talk about? Um, like Nick Swisher, I got a chance to have him on. He was my favorite Yankee when he was with the Yankees. And um, they were doing this live stream for the uh, World Series back in... I think 2020. And at the time he was promoting it through Fox Sports. So Fox Sports helped me set it up and set up the interview and everything. But it has to be relevant and um, you know, kind of be the right placement, if that makes sense. So is the is podcasting and then of course your your command your brand media company, uh, is that is that all you're doing right now yeah. professionally? Yeah, our, so- our agency has uh, uh we have like 20 employees over here and um, you know, we're just kind of cranking along, man. So you <clears throat> so how what were you doing to make money when you started the podcast in 2014, 2015? I was working at a friend's marketing firm. Um, I had taught myself how to build websites from watching YouTube videos and reading blogs. Because I think like, especially like when you're starting something new, you always want to start it while you have something else. Cause you make really bad decisions. If you got to base what you're doing on this has to produce money for me right now. So I started initially as a side hustle and then it actually got to the point where we had started this company behind it. And I had to make a decision. Okay. I'm not making as much as I'm making at the company, but if I put more of my time in, of course I can make more money. So, you know, that, that's how it worked for me. So, so uh, I'm going to dig a little bit then. So in 2015, you, you launched this podcast that you do today, which I was yes. a guest on earlier this week, create your own life podcast. That podcast it was the one that we're talking about. got ranked number one. So at yep. what point did that podcast, if and maybe it didn't, maybe I'm making the assumption at what point did that podcast actually start monetizing to a degree that made, made a dent. So early on, it was a lot of like affiliate deals and stuff like that. So we weren't making a ton of money and, you know, we still do well, but it's not a massive revenue driver. Right. You know, cause though I'd like to be, I'm not Joe Rogan. Right. Um, like, so that's the thing you have to look at is we do great with numbers. You know, we're doing about a hundred thousand listens a month, but something like that 
isn't enough to drive revenue, right? Because the way a lot of podcast advertising drives is by CPM. So they pay a dollar amount per thousand. So the going rate's like 15 to 25 bucks per thousand. So you get a thousand listens, you get 25 bucks. So when you look at it that way, you're not making, uh, most people won't make a ton of money. The way a podcast really works is using it to promote what else you're already doing, right? Like you use it as your PR vehicle so people know, like, and trust you. So when we started the agency, uh, which is originally called Get Featured Media in 2016, uh, which became Command Your Brand in 2017, that was when, you know, things started really moving. And, uh, you know, frankly, we had one employee for their first three years in business as I was kind of wrapping my head around things because as I told you, I failed a lot of things. I didn't know how to hire people. I didn't know how to build a business. And once we got a lot of those processes down, that's what helped us to scale. So the, so the Command Your Brand, the, the media company, um, really it plays quite nicely with the idea of, okay, you're podcasting. You've created a killer podcast. You're doing great with the podcasting. So now it is command your brand. Is that what, what you're trying to do with that is to help other people like me, for example, to leverage the podcast for influence, for impact and for financial reward? Yeah, because when you when you look at it, um, we we see ourselves as the mouthpiece for CEOs and founders. Um, you know, we don't really work well with other people in the C suite because they don't have really the 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 story of the business, right? So that's what I see, what I see is working with a CEO and founder. So what we really help them do is figure out how to tell a better story, how to position that story correctly, and then we help them find the right shows. Because here's the thing: you could have the right show, but I don't want to be rude, but if you suck. It's not really going to go so well. So it's a really, really vital point to being on the right. It's once again, it goes back to what we talked about before relevancy and what you're doing, right? Relevancy is always important. So we're always helping our clients to be relevant in the right areas. So is your, is your client base, are they people that are just promoting whatever the thing is? It could be a product service, whatever it happens to be. And you're, you're saying, hey, I will get you booked on podcasts. Or is your client the podcaster that you can get clients booked for their show? So we don't do show booking because actually we tried that product uh, like five years ago, man. Um, and expectations are, are a little wild with that one. I actually had a call with a guy once. And you'll laugh at this. And because we were kind of like surveying to see if like this is a product we could offer in addition to what we're doing. And he's like, so I want to have Grant Cardone, Tim Ferriss and Gary Vaynerchuk. And I'll pay you 75 bucks a booking. And I laughed at him. I'm like, OK, this is not going to be a a really great um, vertical. Like when we talked to people, the expectations were through the roof. And I was just like, I just don't want to deal with that because it just seems like too many things to deal with. So what we were could really, what we do is the reverse is finding the right shows to place people on. Now, a lot of our clients have podcasts, but we really find podcasts for our clients and help them to tell a better story. Um, a big percentage of what we do is actually the storytelling aspect because we really want to make sure you can deliver in the right way to the right people and teach. This is primarily a teaching platform. You know, if you get a, pit, uh, get on and, and you know pitch like you're the sham wow guy, this is not going to go well for you, man. Like you got to really be willing to communicate and teach. We're going to take a break from our show right now to bring you our sponsors. All right, thanks for listening to our sponsors. Now back to the show. So, what is the biggest mistake you've made during the building of the podcast itself and and or the the uh, command your brand media? Biggest mistake, huh? I'll tell you what, um, the biggest mistake for me is like, yeah, we had all those accolades of the podcast and everything else, but like, it took me a long time to be willing to teach, to talk in my own voice, if that makes sense. Because I, number one, had to find it. Number, number two, be comfortable with it. And number three, realize, well, what's the worst that could happen if I'm just me? Um, you know, I tend to lean a little bit more politically conservative. So I want to talk about a lot of topics around those things. So because of that, I've went a little edgier in the last three years, but I've really enjoyed those conversations and our audience has grown more because I'm actually talking about things I, I enjoy um, and that really align with me. So for, frankly, it was not really willing to be myself in the beginning, which is a big deal. Now, if we were to look at the company, I would say you know, not having you know, better processes early on so we could actually put people in those positions because when you're looking at hiring, one of your biggest issues is trying to put people in a job without them knowing what to do or how to do it based on how you want it done. So once we got processes down in around 2018, 2019, that's what really helped us to hire a lot more people. So not having your own voice or not using your own voice or being honest or transparent. Because you want people to like you. Voice. Yeah. Um, I have that problem. I think, I think everybody has that problem. I think, I, think, I think most people have it and those who don't have it fall into one of two categories. They're either absolute narcissists 
or or they're a jerk, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> so that may not be a clinical de- uh, definition of what we're dealing with here, but how did you get to the point? You are you're... clinically a jerk. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's a, I think that's a thing, right? The American. American Maybe, I don't know. Um, so when did you, and how did you decide? All right. And I'm, I'm going all in. I'm going to talk, for instance, talk about politically conservative ideals or whatever, or whatever the edgy thing. That, I got that, angry, uh, man. Like I got angry. Like the last couple of years that we've kind of lived through have been a little bit too much for me where I'm kind of like, this is ridiculous. You know, I feel like I need to stand for something or fall for anything. And it's like, if I, if I fall, man, I fall, whatever, you know, it's, it's a podcast. So like, for me, I wanted to start talking about things that matter. So, you know, we had Peter McCullough on the show. We had Del Bigtree on the show. Um, We've had people running for political office on the show. Now it's not a political show, but I want to talk about issues that matter. And that's why we even re-recorded the podcast intro at that time. You know, it used to say, you know, um, you know, talking about like, the lifestyle and everything like that. And now we say, Hey, this is the create your own life show. We talk about things that matter, right? Because, you know, another life coach or whatever, like that's great, but it's not going to, it's not going to change the world. Right. Um, not that, you know, I, I'm not that full of myself that I think I'm going to make this giant world change, but I can help to move the dial a little bit, man. Um, so for me, I wanted to talk about things that matter. I got mad. So did, uh, when Mike Lindell came on your show, how much did you talk about pillows versus the 2020 election? Uh, 95% of it was about pillows and building his business. The dude has an insane story. Um, oh, yeah. I, had, I had heard him back on IMUS back in the day. Um, and, uh, he has this insane story about his drug addiction and like living in a crack house and sleeping in this cabin in the woods that he like found and stuff. And he like, you know, found God and it was a big turning point in his life and helped him build this business. Now, of course we talked about election fraud cause Mike's really into that right now, but 95% of it was about his story, which is pretty incredible. Well, so I, I, you know, I'm with you. I think that the last couple of years we have been, it, it's, I, I can't believe we've let happen what has happened. It is, yeah. it is insane to me. And, and uh, also on my show, I don't, we don't get into political, uh, political sure. discussions almost at ever, but, but I think the people that know me and the people that know what I stand for, they know, yeah, th- th- this is insane. I, I, I think it's crazy. Uh, I sometimes wonder, Jeremy, what it would be like if I just did a show on current events or just political stuff or just. It's depressing, though, man. (laughs) I tried to do a daily show where I just did like political stuff because I I got way too into it. And it's depressing as hell. So, you know, I've the the thing I found is kind of this nice balance between issues I want to talk about and high performance, because we still talk a lot about a lot of that. And and the thing I've tried to do as well is is bring in people I don't agree with to have good conversations with. So I just had um, uh, Batya Unger Sargon on. She wrote this this uh, uh, book called Bad News, but she's the uh, deputy opinion editor for Newsweek. We don't agree on a lot, but we agree we love this country. And I think when you can do that, you can have some really interesting conversations about how we fix it. So let me ask you this question. You've been, you've been a a successful podcaster. Obviously you've been, you're building a successful media company to help other people get and and leverage podcasting. Uh, What we, what we haven't talked about yet is the fact that you were a successful power lifter. So uh, tell me, (laughs) tell me a little bit about that. Cause for those of you that are not watching this, you got to go watch the YouTube I, I was just on his show the other day and I was telling him a pre-show, like I wasn't paying attention because I was just in show mode as the guest. I wasn't paying attention. But now that he's my guest and I'm looking at him like, holy crap, the guns on this dude. You got to go look at this. Well, so how did you get into that, Jeremy? How, how did that happen? I was a, I was a wrestler in school. I wrestled 103, 119, 140. And uh, you don't develop some really, really good eating habits when you're a wrestler um, because you got to make weight, especially when, you know, you're in high school and you're supposed to be growing and you're like, no, I got to maintain this weight. Um, so, you know, frankly, I'd started fitness, just start taking better care of myself. And the thing I found is I'm just naturally able to build muscle. So I'm like, let's go all in. So I, I started this program in I'm trying to think now, like 2007 called the Max OT. And uh, you do 80% of your max for a minimum of four, but a maximum of six reps for eight to 12 total rep uh, sets per, per workout. And I was able to put a lot of weight very quickly. I started that I was 140 within a year. I was 160. Um, when I was competing in my early twenties, I'm, I'm 35. Now I was competing at 215, and I'm five foot seven. So it's not like I'm a big dude. And, and, you know, now I'm like a buck 60, but really for me, it was just kind of trying to get a little healthier. And I realized my body's kind of predispositioned in a good way to, to, to grow, man. 
So what, what's it like being a, I mean, did you, did you compete? I mean, is that, how, how does that work? I did a lot of natural competitions. So I did like, um, uh, the, the big three. So that's bench squat and deadlift. So I was benching 455 squatting 705 and deadlifting 635. I can still deadlift close to close to five, but I, I will tell you, I'm only pushing like 315 on bench now. It's only 315. <laughs> I do. I do some cool, some cool stuff too. Like I, uh, uh, back in 2014, I pulled a tank for the Wounded Warrior Project. So what they do is they, they take a tank and they put it on the trailer of an 18-wheeler and they put the 18-wheeler in neutral. So it's about 80,000 pounds combined. Um, and then they time you how quickly you can pull the thing. Wow. <laughs> okay. All right. So we know what we're dealing with. We know what we're dealing with now. So how do you how do you define success? You've been successful at a lot of things, at least from my perspective. How, how does Jeremy Ryan Slate define that word success i think when you look at it a lot of people like they define it as money or achievement and and whatever and those things are important because i will say like you know i don't believe in participation trophies you should definitely be winning something but i think at the same time it's a balance between you know am i successful enough to be able to spend time with my family am i successful enough to be able to have the freedom to go the places i want and do the things i want and you know donate money to my church and all that kind of stuff so to me it's having a balance between the things i want to achieve and also having the time and the people to, achieve, to, you know, kind of enjoy them with. So as with that, as a definition, do you consider yourself to be successful? I'm working my way there, man. It's a work in progress. Cause you know, we, we've, we've had our best year in business ever last year, but I don't know. I have big goals, man. And, and I don't know if you're like this, but like my, my wife will step back and she'd be like, but look what we did last year. That's incredible. And I'll be like, yeah, but it's not that. And she's like, yeah, but that's five years down the road. I'm like, no, I want to be there. So I have to get better at kind of being happy in the moment and, you know, thinking the moment is successful rather than thinking because I'm not there, I'm not successful. Well, but I think though that that is the entrepreneurial, like that, that's our thing. That's what we are because goals grow. So for example, if you set a goal of say a million dollars in revenue for, for a year for, for a business and you hit it, no entrepreneur is going to say, we did it, guys. We have arrived. No, it's like, okay, next year it's three. You know, <laughs> so goals grow. So I don't think you, I, I think you uh, probably selling yourself a little bit short there. I think from my seat, looking in, very successful, uh, created a great brand, created a great podcast, helping other people do the same thing. And, you know, I don't know how much time you spend with your family and how much freedom of time you actually have. Cause that's, well, only, I, I work know, from home, have. which is a big deal for me, man. We have a small farm in here in New Jersey on four acres and, you know, a couple dozen chickens, four roosters, a pig. So I get to like, you know, I go get, the, I go get the eggs of my daughter in the morning. Like, how great is that? So it's like to be able to do that stuff and do what I love for a living. That's success to me. Well, there you go, man. So then the answer to that question is yes, I am successful, but, but there's, there's more to go. Like there's, you're not, you're 35, you got more to do. There's more to come. Like who knows what's going to happen next? I mean, you just said earlier in the show, well, you'd like to be Joe Rogan, but you're not. Well, who knows? Joe Rogan was hosting Fear Factor, what, 20 years ago? Who, like, well, who knew who, what he was going to accomplish? So, man, I think, I think you've got something, something going on pretty good. So let me, let me, let me kind of ask this, because this show is the root of all success. And uh, we want to talk about where your success came from. So tell me and tell the listeners, where, like, what's your secret? How did you become successful? What, where did it come from? And why do you think you've achieved so much success? You know, <clears throat> That's a tough one. And because and, and, there's two different things on that. Like, number one, there was realizing why it matters, right? Because I think a lot of people never realize why it matters. They just kind of keep doing the same thing forever. Like almost losing a parent when, when my mom had her stroke in 2012, that made me look at a lot of different things and being like, why am, why am I doing this? Like, this doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's one part of it. <clears throat> the other part about it is, um, you know, having good role models. Um, you know, my, my, my dad is the single hardest working human being I've ever met. He started in the machine shop. He, he, he had a professional baseball career, which ended due to injury. He was a pitcher at only five, nine. So obviously your body doesn't hold up long and well, you know, pitching when you're short. So he started the machine shop at a company, worked his way up to being the VP of that company by the time he retired. So I learned what hard work was. So I think to me, that's really where I picked a lot of that up is, is really from my parents. Um, initially, um, I didn't explore my own dreams, which I think is important because you want to explore the things you want to do. But I really picked a lot of that up because I had a really great and stable family. And I think that's, that's really the value in family. 
So if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying that, you know, your, your ability to realize what matters and having good role models is what's allowed you to become successful. Is that right? Yeah, because it, it, you have to look at it, man. Like this is something um, I, I have a book coming out in June called Unremarkable to Extraordinary. And one of the concepts in there um, is, is you look at somebody like Tom Brady, right? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Packers fan, but I'm a huge Tom Brady fan for, for, for one reason. You look at, you know, Michigan, he barely started to his senior year. Um, in high school, he barely started till his senior year. He gets drafted in the sixth round, only plays because uh, Mo Lewis takes out Drew Bledsoe and they need somebody to play quarterback. So that preparation and that willingness to work has to meet opportunity, right? So <clears throat> the more times you show up and show up and show up, an opportunity is going to come. There's, a, there's an Abraham Lincoln quote where he says, I will prepare and my day will come. We don't know when it's coming. We don't know how many times it's coming, but you have to show up and prepare, man. Preparation, man. That sounds very familiar to the to the regular listeners to my show. There are oftentimes in the show I go through these five keys of success that I've discovered after doing all these interviews, and preparation is one of the five keys. Yep. It's having the know how to pull it off. It's it's being ready when the day is there. And what's funny, what's funny, Jeremy, is that a lot of people don't know they don't really recognize what they're prepared to be successful in. So for you, you're successful as a podcaster immensely. So. But if you go back and we kind of dig in a little bit and we think about, well how, well, how and why are you truly prepared? How are you prepared for that? Sure. I think you got you realize what matters and you got good role models, but neither your parents were podcasters or radio. No. people. It sounds like. So so what was it? Can you have you thought about it? Like what what really did prepare me to be great behind the microphone and in front of the camera? You know, that's I think it's the fact that I loved it so much. You know what I mean? Like I, I really have enjoyed I've been a, this is going to sound weird. I've been a huge fan of like late night radio. And when I mean late, right, late night radio, like I'd listen to like, um, there was this show uh, in New York City called The John Bachelor Show. And he'd interview authors and he'd interview um, like famous speakers and political figures. And I always loved that show. So like I've always had a huge affinity for radio, which eventually became podcasting. And so I think for me, it's because I love that. And I'm like, if I can just find a way to do this every day of my life, like I I'm going to love that. And I, and I do love that. So for me, I think it's finding something that my affinity aligns with hard work, right? Because you can't just love something and, and think you're going to make money on it, right? There has to be something beneficial in terms of how you can make money off of it. Yeah. And that, and that goes to one of the first keys I've found of success is that of passion, which means literally means being willing to suffer. So it's not just liking it. It's I'm willing to suffer for it. And you said hard work. It's like, am I willing to put in the hours? Am I willing to put in the reps? Am I willing to put in the time to get there? You know, I don't like lifting weights. You obviously do. So, so love it, man. It's fun. So for you, like, <laughs> Hey, you go do the thing, but you're going to succeed and receive, receive and re reap the rewards of that thing that you're doing. Cause you're passionate about it. you're willing to suffer through the weight of 500 pounds. I'm not, I'm not willing to do that. It doesn't matter to me. I, I, I can open every jar in the house. I'm strong enough. I don't, <laughs> there's nothing I need. There's nothing else I need to do, but there are things that I do and love and I'm passionate about that you're not. So I think the world needs to understand and embrace, especially entrepreneurs, what are you passionate about? What are you willing to suffer for? And what are you prepared for? And what I find interesting about doing this show, man, is that just like you do in your show, you find these interesting little tidbits is a lot of times people don't realize what truly prepared them. And so all listen to all those late night radio shows and then and then listen to those hours and hours and hours of podcasts that you listen to. Something in your brain one day went, you know what? I want to do that. And so your preparation just was by osmosis. You didn't even, yeah. didn't even know it was happening. Tell me, I, I didn't even watch a Yankee game on TV, by the way, I listened to him on the radio because like, you know what I mean? Like I, I just remember John Sterling for the, 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 the Yankees <laughs> announcer. He's like 85 years old, by the way. And he still announces and he's like, it is high. It is far. It is. It's over the second baseman. He's like, you know, blind at this point. Um, but like, I just remember, like, I remember Mike Mussina almost pitching a perfect game. And in my mind, I had like painted what these things looked at. Right. So for me, it's always been this, this thing I've really loved. But can I also add something to what you just said? Because that's a really important distinction about passion. There's two viewpoints on it that I think people kind of get messed up on. There's the viewpoint that says, follow your passion. And there's a viewpoint that says, find your passion. And the word before passion is really important. Because follow your passion means you're going to keep doing things until eventually you hope, it, you hope it works out. Finding your passion is an active process and requires a lot of damn work. You know, you got to do some things you like, you got to do some things you don't like, and you find passion. But to just follow your passion, I think, is a really poor idea. Agreed, 100%. And see, that's, and I'm glad we're talking, man. I'm glad to know you because 
<laughs> all these folks that talk about just, just well, how do I, how can I be successful? Mr. Guru, just follow your passion, man. Just what are your passion about? Go do that. You're going to be, you're going to be following it for a long no. time, man. Oh no. Listen, you're, you're, lots of people are passionate about lots of things. people are passionate about sleep. You're not going to make any money on that. They're just passionate about playing video games. And while I, I understand that there are some few, very few people that do make money, doing that, you're not going to make money doing that. You find your passion and, and passion like I was alluding to a moment ago, the word passion doesn't just mean uh, what you love and are excited about. The root word for passion in Latin means willing to suffer. That's why we call it the passion of the Christ. Correct. It wasn't that he was excited. It wasn't that he was loving it. It was there was a cause. There was a willingness to suffer for something greater. So I 100% agree. And I think that's a sound clip that somebody, either you or me, <laughs> are going to use because it is don't don't follow it. Find it. It's, it's an active process. Yes. Finding tells you it's an active process, right? Like, like you know, I, I like a lot of Gary Vee's content, but I think when he tells people don't do stuff you don't like to do, that's terrible advice I because do, you're going to have to do a lot of things up front you don't like to do because here's the thing. If you don't know how to do certain things in your business and you hire somebody to do it, that's why you get screwed because you don't know when something's not going right. Yeah, I, I agree with you on Gary Vee. I actually had tickets. Uh, I had tickets a few years ago. Uh, Tony Robbins, Gary Vee, and uh, Damon John were all speaking at an event. And I saw Damon John. He did a fantastic job. He had a choreographed kind of music, musical speech, which was pretty amazing. Like he he would speak and they had choreographed the music to hit at certain points. It was it was phenomenal. Wow. And of course, Tony Robbins was amazing. Four hours and 45 minutes without a break a nonstop. I was on the front row. It was, it was awesome, but I didn't go, I didn't go see Gary. And, um, I, I just, I, I like Gary from a, he was a very successful entrepreneur, but I think his advice sometimes is, is missing the mark. And I, I especially, I especially think he's hard on parents in a way that is not justified. I, yeah. I, do you have, you have kids? We talk about this. Yeah. I have, I have a one-year-old and a three-year-old. So oh, it's, well, it's kind of where we're very early in that process. So my you're just a goaltender. You're a goaltender, man. That's all you are. <laughs> You my my three year old has the vocabulary of a ten year old, which is a little wild. But anyway, well, I've got I've got a twenty two year old son and a nineteen year old daughter, and and uh, you know Gary, if, if if you and you may have never paid attention to it before, but I don't listen, I don't pay attention to his ton of his content. Like I, I you know he's he's built some businesses and that's great, and I don't want to take anything away from that. But I just don't agree with a lot of his advice. Agreed, I, I I'm with you because I think if you if you listen to anything he talks about parents, I mean he essentially is telling kids to, to say f you to the parents and go do what you want because the parents. You know, the parents are holding you back. You know, they don't know what's right. They don't they, they don't understand. The parents just don't understand like the old Will Smith song that that I, I disagree with that so much. Didn't so his that, dad build the business that he got even more attention for? I just want to point out that. Yeah, he was a little so he, caveat. So he didn't start the wine business. But the way I understand as I understand it, and maybe this show will only get listens because people are hating on us for hating on Gary. But but I uh, but I think the way I understand it is his dad started the wine store, but he came in and figured out how to take it to that next level. Right. Yeah. And then and then catapulted off of that into personal brand, which he's probably bet between him and Cardone, I think probably are the two top yeah. personal brands right now. And they're doing a a great job at it, but I'm not, that's not my personality. Going back to talking about you talking about using your voice, you know, that's not my voice. I'm not that I'm not that brash out, you know, in your face. This is just not, it's not who I am. And if that's what you want, go listen to Gary Vee, go listen to Grant Cardone. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. So let me ask you, let me ask you a few questions as we finish up today. So yeah, the listeners to this show are mostly entrepreneurs and um, they're, they 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 span the gamut of the spectrum of entrepreneurs from startup all the way to, you know, nine nine figure entrepreneurs that are doing, they're killing it, right? So, if you, as someone who's been very successful in the entrepreneurial space through podcasting and building a media uh, agency around that concept, if you could speak to the front end of that spectrum, what advice what advice does Jeremy Slate have for those people? In terms of like people building a podcast or just in general? No, like just entrepreneurs life. in general, like based on your experience, but you're looking at the beginning of that spectrum, the people that are listening to the show that are the beginning of that spectrum, what's your advice for those folks? So the thing I would say, um, and this is just from, I've experienced it both ways, you know, when starting something new, I would say build it alongside something that's already making you money because you're going to make some really short decided decisions if it's got to pay the bills right now, because you're like, all right, top ramen or nothing. So like when you're looking at that, you, you, you make some really bad decisions. So I would say start, if you're going to start something new, start away, have something else. The side hustle is the best way to start. So that's one thing I would say to the other end of it. I would say, you know, 
you, you, the more you develop yourself, the more your business is going to develop. And, you know, that's something I learned in, in how I lead my business. You know, in 2022, um, we have the coolest version of our company we've ever had. And it's more because they're more like a team. They're more like a family. And when I look at it, it's because I've gotten better in helping them to be that way, if that makes sense. So the, the more you can grow and the more you can learn how to facilitate is, is what's really going to help your business to grow. Personal development, man. That's that's why podcasting is so phenomenal as a personal development tool, because just, just while you're driving, listen to one of these things. And you've got the Create Your Own Life podcast with Jeremy Slate. You've got Root, The Root of All Success with the real Jason Duncan. There's so many others. By, by the way, let's, let's just do a quick rundown. What, what are some of the, your favorite podcasts that you would encourage an entrepreneur to listen to? I don't listen to business podcasts, man. Oh my um, gosh. I'm terrible. <laughs> um, I, I, so I listen to like, um, you know, it depends on the episode, but ESPN daily sometimes, uh, talking Yanks, Bronx pinstripes podcast. Um, um, what else do I listen to? Uh, the Dan Bongino show. It depends on the day, man. I, I don't listen to a lot of like business podcasts. Sorry. Oops, Even though it's okay. what I create. <laughs> All right. So, so you and I, we got to make a pact between one another. You got to subscribe to mine. I got to subscribe to yours before the sure. day is over. Right. So we yeah. got to do that. <laughs> Sounds good to me, man. Well, Jeremy, so uh, is your book unremarkable to extraordinary. What, tell me about that when that comes out and how people can get access to it. So that's coming out on June 21st. And it's really a lot of what we've talked about here. Like how success is actually achieved, not those pie in the sky, you know, like just think about it and write it on your mirror 50 times and you're going to do it. Well, it takes, it takes work and it takes a lot of different things. So it's things that I've learned from people that have really done it. Like, um, you know, four-star generals, NBA and NFL hall of famers, platinum recording artists, and it's the real what success is and how you can achieve it. So they can actually get that over at getextraordinarybook.com. And if they head over there and come back and order it through there and come back with their order code, we're going to give them a free version of the audiobook as well as a, a really cool audio guide we put together called 30 Days of Extraordinary. So that's getextraordinarybook.com. All right. I just wrote it down. Getextraordinarybook.com. Everybody needs to go there. And when you go over there, if there's an opportunity to tell them that you heard about it on the route of all success, make sure you do that. How, how would people reach out to you, Jeremy, if they, if they say, hey, I want to get into the podcast game. I want, I want, to, I want some help with that. What's the best way to reach out to you about that? So they can check us out over at commandyourbrand.com or I am at Jeremy Ryan Slate in all platforms. And I, I do my best to respond to, to every single DM that comes in. So command your brand. What's the website again? Command.com. Commandyourbrand.com or at Jeremy Ryan Slate on all pla uh, social media platforms. That's Jeremy Ryan Slate. So Jeremy Ryan Slate, thank you for being a guest on the show today. It's been a great conversation. And, 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 uh, you know, I, I really, I think, I think you and I have a lot in common. I think that we see the world the same way and I love, I love your perspective on things. So thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you for sharing that with my, my listeners today. So congratulations on your, all your success. Hey, thank you so much for having me, man. Well, there you have it. Another very successful entrepreneur and this time a podcaster, a fellow podcaster and how, he became successful. And I think if you go back and, and listen to this again or pay attention and remember what we talked about uh, in this show today about his definition of success, he talked about his definition being realizing what matters, uh, you know, having time with the family and freedom of time. Those are things I think most of us would agree with, that, that that's what the definition of success is and how he became successful, having good role models, being prepared. Um, Jeremy's an amazing guy and I'm glad to know, know him. And that's one of the benefits of being a podcaster is I get to meet some amazing, amazing people from all over this world. Uh, he's got that book unremarkable to extraordinary. It's coming out just, uh, it's going to be released on June 21st, which is actually prior to the release of this episode. So June 21st, uh, 2022 is when his book's coming out. And if you go to get extraordinary you get some extra benefits. If you buy the book there, you get some extra benefits, some extra stuff that uh, extra content that Jeremy and his team will give you, but go check him out. Go, go look up at uh, create your own life podcast. Make sure you subscribe to that. Subscribe to this podcast. If you haven't already done it. And I want to give a quick little shout out, uh, no names for sure, but there are a few people who have just in the past day or two have come up to me and say, Hey, Jason. And these are people that don't live close to me. We're not friends necessarily. We don't hang out, but, but our listeners to the podcast, and they say, hey, Jason, love your podcast, love listening to pod your podcast and love your guests. And so for that, I want to say how grateful I am. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Thank you for taking the time to come out and say how much you like the podcast. And if there's a guest that you think should be on and you have that connection to that person, 
please connect me. I want to have extraordinarily successful people on the show. Ask them about their stories and their secrets to success so that you can benefit as an entrepreneur. So that's what I do. Now, my offer at the end of this show is going to be for you to reach out to me through the realjasonduncan.com slash I am I ready? Am I ready? And what that what that little landing page there is going to ask you about is are you ready to begin living the exit lifestyle? Are you be, are you ready to begin living the life of freedom, of choice, and of time, like we talked about with Jeremy on the show today? Are you ready for that? Me, not like mentally ready, but is your business prepared for you to be able to step away so that you can do that? So my entire business platform, coaching platform is about living the exit lifestyle. That's what the goal is, is you can live that exit lifestyle without having to sell your business. And I call that method exit without exiting. And if you want to know what, if you're ready and how close you are to that opportunity of stepping away, go to the real jasonduncan.com slash am I ready? And there is an opportunity for, the, for you there to invest in a timeline evaluator. It's an exit timeline evaluator that I've created, spent a lot of time, put a lot of effort and one money into this thing to show you through a series of questions, how close you are and what steps you would need to take to get your business ready for that. It includes live coaching with me, one-on-one -on -one with me and or my team, where you can sit down and go through your timeline and look at how close you are. Maybe you're five years away. Maybe you're closer than you think. Maybe you're ready to do it now and you just need to change a couple little things. What's that worth to you? Make that investment in yourself today. Go to therealjasonduncan.com slash am I ready? Well, make sure you tune in again next week when I talk with yet another very successful entrepreneur about his or her journey to success. Until then, I am the real Jason Duncan and Jesus is King. Thank you for listening to another edition of The Root of All Success with the real Jason Duncan. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, we invite you to visit therootofallsuccess.com to access the show notes and other helpful resources. Take charge of your business. Grow it from great to incredible. Join us again next time here on The Root of All Success. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.